John. 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 Hi. And do laundry and. Made for you and me. This land is your land. This land is my land. From California to New York Island. From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. Nobody living. A slap suit is a strategic lawsuit against public participation. All I had to do to get in this lawsuit was, was to sign a piece of paper with the Weed Water Group asking our local water board to help us to resolve the issue of ownership of the springs. That's all I did, and I got sued. So this meeting today is to let Roseburg know that we are paying attention to the slap suit to water rights, to public trust issues. And with that, I would like to introduce Lauren Regan. All right, so part of the reason that we're all here today is to basically tell corporations like Roseburg Forest Products that they're not going to be able to steal our water, steal our land, and now attempt to rob us of our basic First Amendment rights with the way that they have been doing. A slap suit is a frivolous lawsuit that is basically filed to silence advocates and to silence dissent. And they don't care about winning these cases. They want to scare the rest of us from standing in solidarity with people that are fighting against these corporate interests for their land, for their water, and for their community's right to direct what happens to them in their communities. And so Protect the Protest is a national, global coalition made up of lawyers, uh, nonprofit organizations, uh, organizers, and media specialists. And our motto is, if you come after one of us, you're coming after all of us. Yeah. If one of us is attacked and sued by a corporation, we are all going to pile onto that target campaign. We're going to amplify their media, we're going to amplify their organizing and actions and campaigns, and we're going to give them free lawyers. So if their goal is to suck money, resources, and humans away from the causes and campaigns that these corporations are targeting, they've got another thing coming, because it's going to backfire on them. Backfire. So today we are here in solidarity with our neighbors in California, but Roseburg Forest Products also owns a lot of the drinking water of Oregon residents. They are one of the largest industrial logging companies in Oregon, and we have people today in the crowd whose drinking water has also been threatened by Ro Roseburg Forest Products already. So. That fight is coming to Oregon soon and telling them today that they cannot own spring water coming from Mount Shasta, providing some of the cleanest, freshest water so that they can sell billions of plastic bottles of that water to Japan and other world markets. That should be criminal. How dare they sue elected representatives and people who did nothing more than to sign a letter saying that they oppose the privatization and the exploitation of this water source. The corporation is literally telling these residents, dig a well. For hundreds of years they have had spring water from this mountain free and available to them. And the corporation just simply tells these residents, 
dig million dollar wells and you get to drink the water out of the ground that's probably been poisoned by international paper and the other industrial logging giants that come from this area. They should drink the poison water caused by this industry while the industry profits off of fresh mountain spring water that is a public right, a public resource. Sing it, Thank sing it. Awesome. Thank you, Lauren. So, you're going to hear from some more members of the League 9. And I want to tell you that it was incredibly frightening to get that eight-pound stack of paper delivered to my doorstep. I was looking at having to take out a mortgage on my house. So this is so unfair, and we're really happy to be here and to tell you about it. Um, our first speaker is Bob Hall, and he is a member of the Reed City Council. He is a member of the WCWC Water Group, and he is also a member of the Reed Nine. Good morning. What? What, what, what an effort here, what an effort. Thank everybody, get, get up right now. Nice job here showing up today. I mean, this yeah. is awesome, this is awesome. But as Monica was just saying, getting, because, getting sued because we were saying that the water was not uh, Roseburg's water, that it was actually the city of Weed's water. That's all we said. We were, uh, we were thrown into a, a lawsuit that we were uh, still defending ourselves from. but. I'm, we'll be handing these, these uh, pa some paperwork around that actually the, the documentation that we found that actually states how the water became the city of Leeds. It, it was listed from 1983 to, 19, to 2007 as the city of Leeds. And this is just basically a water grab that they've come in, thrown the city into, into court, into a, uh, into defend ourselves. In the last five years, we spent $400,000 defending ourselves. Now we're talking about a community of 3,000 people. The median income per household is $24,000 a year. That's who we are. But this is this is water we use for 110 years, like Monica said. But the, uh, the, the, the we, we've done the work. The this letter here that was that we found was actually found in a uh, the water uh, the water master made an agreement with. Uh, Howard Neal, who was the International Papers Resource Director, and they were fin they're finalizing their assets in the weed area, and it says clearly that uh, the current verbal agreement is to allot 2.0 cubic feet to the City of Weed and, and uh, 0.90 to International Paper, who becomes the uh, Roseburg. But Roseburg wasn't even in the picture on August 5th, 1982. But uh, we'd like to everybody to find this. But the kicker is that in 1996, nobody could find any paperwork at all. Howard Neal became the head engineer for Roseburg Forest Products. This letter with that nobody could find was in a in uh, a employee of Roseburg. So, what? Like I've said before, this is more than just a water grab. This is immoral. This is just about intimidation. It is nothing short of just a, a, a grab, a power grab, because they have money for a, a legal fund, and we're struggling for it. The other uh, part of this was when once the uh, we're, we're here because we were uh, once we were sued, it became apparent that this is bigger than the water. And as as we started, uh, we we obviously. Uh, I want to say this, we had some help, legal help to come, and at first it was like, oh, we're okay. But then when you start thinking about Greenpeace and these other organizations that are being tied up in, in, in uh, law, lawsuits now with no intent of winning. It's not, it's not about winning the, the, the uh, court case, it's just about milking the person, whoever is uh, in, in the lawsuit to weaken them financially. And they've, uh, they've see, succeeded at that in weed. Uh, and what the alternatives become into crazy things of even eminent domain or things like that, we're, we're probably, there's possibly we may have to pay for the water we already own compared to legal costs. How long can the city of uh, uh, 3,000 people with a median income of $24,000 per household, how long can we stay in court? They know this. 
this is what they're working on. This is the advantage that they have, and uh, they're, they're here. To, obviously, they really don't care, but we were, were, I'm optimistic they're, they're going to understand. And there's some people here in this building that are making these decisions. It's not the worker down in, that they tried to pit us against the weed. It's not the worker. It's people at this corporate level that are making these decisions, and as I spoke to a young lady that came out this morning to represent them, and I'll say what I'd say to most, most of them, it's obvious she sold her soul. This, this, this is a moral issue. This, this is, this, the decisions that are being made here are made, being made at an at a, uh, emotional level that uh, is close to reptilian. And the, <laughs> the difference between us and repti repti reptiles is that reptiles will eat their young. They will eat their young. They're in a low, low level thinking. And that's what happens when you sell your soul. And uh, at, at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, the president of our uh, WCWC, a Water for the Weed Citizens, Jim Taylor, who uh, uh, is a, uh, he's a real leader. He's, 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 a, he's a, uh, a very subtle, very subtle Southern gentleman with the grace of, uh, he's awesome. Jim Taylor, please. It's hard to live up to that. I don't know. I, I think Bob pretty much covered everything. Uh, I think Bob pretty much covered all of our points. Uh, I have been on this, with, associated with this group for about four years now, and we've come from just a very grassroots uh, beginning until we've got notification, we've got publicity all over the United States. Uh, so we're very fortunate to have the people uh, that. I had no way, no clue of knowing, but it just seems like things start very small, and if you're right, things happen. It's just like today now, we got up as pouring rain, and now for this, somebody's looking out for us. We got bright sunshine, so. Uh, and anyway, thank everyone that's come. Thank you for your support, and at the end of this, I'd like to introduce one of our nine members who has been invaluable to us. He is a published author. He is uh, very uh, astute in the water industry around the world, not only here in the United States, but we're blessed to have him in our community, Bruce Shoemaker. He lives in weed. And he lives, he lives in weed. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Um, I'm going to tell a little story about the roots of what this is about. Last year for work, I was in Tokyo. And you can buy all this stuff in vending machines in Tokyo. And so right in my motel room, you could go down to the end of the aisle, and there was a vending machine full of beer. It was really awesome. But among the other products that I found in the vending machine was Crystal Geyser water from Weed, California. You can see it's all in Japanese. but And then I realized that there's you know, my home spring, a mile from my house, I was finding the water in a vending machine in Japan. Wow. So, I have a friend who lives in New Zealand, and he brought me a bottle of water that's bottled in Japan from a volcano. <laughs> and then I, I went to Trader Joe's in California, in Reading, and their premium bottled water comes from New Zealand. <laughs> So we've got these ocean freighters taking huge, using huge amounts of diesel fuel crossing the Pacific Ocean from California to Japan, Japan to New Zealand, New Zealand right back to California just to carry water. And a lot of the roots of this is that bottled water has become a brand identity, a commodity, rather than just something that people try to improve the quality of in their local community. Uh, and it's, it's about the privatization of resources, that instead of making our own resources better and protecting our own resources, we're just buying things from other parts of the world because they, it has a cool name and a picture of a volcano on it. Uh, and Crystal Geyser water has become very popular in Japan, but it's also very cheap. It's the cheapest premium water. And a lot of the reason for that is because they're not paying much for it. And they're certainly not paying the city of Weed and the people of our community anything for it. They're just paying Roseburg. And, and, and they have their own well. 
and there's a huge demand and growing demand for bottled water, all of which is, they make these little plastic bottles at our plant in weed. So it's also a huge plastics problem. It's, it's, a, it's a resource problem that in a world that faces climate change issues, we cannot ignore that, that type of, it's insanity, this global trade in, in water. Well, Roseburg is not a water company, they're a lumber company. But they've, they've found, once, once spring water became a commodity, they realized they could make money on it. And basically they sold out our town. This was a legacy from when the first lumber company, the Abner Weed Lumber Company was in, was in weed, and then it was the Long Bell Lumber Company, then International Paper. Finally, Roseburg bought the mill in 1983, and they've decided that the water that was provided through the time we were a company town, that they can just take it away because there's money to be made on it by selling it to Crystal Geyser. And so that's what we've been doing. We're challenging that. And we are, we're up here today because, you know, for our, as Bob and Jim mentioned, for our efforts, Roseburg sued myself and eight other community members, as well as our citizen group and the city of Weed, uh, all to say, say that they have, the, they have the water, it's theirs, and we should not, we need to shut up about it. So we're not shutting up about it. We are here. Yeah. yeah. And, and we have two demands of Roseburg because they're, you know, even though the court last December, our local court was very clear that Roseburg was in the wrong, that this was a slap suit, and that we should be dismissed from the lawsuit, they've appealed it to the state court, appellate court, so it's still hanging over our heads a year later after we thought we were all off it. It's still mounting legal costs, still having to worry about when we have to go to an appearance in Sacramento, briefs, counter responses. And the city of Weed is getting dragged down because we're a poor, economically challenged town and we don't have millions of dollars like these guys do for legal bills. So even though we know we're in the right, they're dragging down our community through this long, expensive lawsuit over the water. So we're here today to tell Roseburg that it's time to stop your pursuit of our water, recognize, do the right thing, and try to restore your reputation in our community. And that second, you need to drop this slap suit because it's, it's, a, it's a human rights violation. It should never have been filed, and it's, it's just simply wrong. So, thank you. Obviously, what, what is the solution to slap lawsuits? You know, we need to come up with a solution. We need to start talking about, you know, what, you know, how harmful it is and what, you know, what a bullying process it is. But what is the answer? Are, there should be, there are, there are anti-slap suit. They talk about anti-slap, but somebody that fails at this should pay dearly for it. Right. And it's something that we need, the, you know, the entire nation to wake up and understand how they're going to do it to us. They're not going to put a gun to our head. They're going to say we can't afford, to, you can't afford to talk. So uh, I, I think that's real important. What are we going to do next as far as the slap lawsuit? Thank you, my fellow weed miners. Um, I have the actual letter that the WCWC Water Group and Weed Nine have written to give to Roseburg Lumber Products. Now, it's a little long, but I like to think I'm a really good reader, so please bear with me. <laughs> this goes to Grady Mulberry, President and Chief Executive Officer, Alan Ford, Chairman of the Board of Directors, Roseburg Forest Products. Dear Mr. Mulberry and Mr. Ford, I am writing to you on behalf of Water for Citizens of Weed, California, an association of citizens working to protect the spring water upon which the people of Weed have depended for our community's entire existence. What? There. Okay, where was it? WCWC 
formed in 2016 at the time when Roseburg Forest Products was negotiating a water lease agreement with the city of Weed, intended to force our community off of our main source of drinking water, Bogan Springs. We have two requests of your company. One, to drop your appeal of the dismissal of WCWC and nine named individuals in what the Superior Court judge last year ruled was an illegal and inappropriate slap suit, strategic lawsuit against public participation. And two, to cease your pursuit of the 2.0 cubic feet per second of Bogan Springs spring water historically used by the people of Weed. We initially objected to the water lease agreement for a number of reasons. First, it is simply wrong for a private corporation to take a vital public resource, such as drinking water, away from a community which depends on that resource. California state law laws prioritize water for domestic use. Water as a human right is codified in the California Constitution, affirming that water should be conserved for the interest of the people and public welfare. Article 10, Section 2. California Water Code, Section 106, explicitly states that the use of water for domestic purposes is the highest use of water. California Health and Safety Code, Section 116270A, guarantees that every citizen of California has the right to pure and safe drinking water. Furthermore, the California Right to Water Bill prioritizes water for personal and domestic uses over industrial and agricultural uses. Well, you Your company's actions are inconsistent with all of these statutes. Secondly, your company has been exploiting a lack of clarity in the historical documentation regarding the transfer of ownership of this water to the city. Over the last two and a half years, we have researched the history of the Bogan Springs water in detail. This has included a number of documents provided by your predecessor, International Paper, as well as those of the California Public Utilities Commission and other entities. These documents show, without doubt, that the intention of, the, of international paper at the time we transformed from being a company town to an incorporated city was for the Bogan Springs water in question to be given to the newly formed city of Weed. The historical record regarding international paper's intentions is very clear. Your company is using a lack of clarity in the subsequent documentation of the water rights transfer to unfairly and illegitimately, illegitimately attempt to take this water away from our community. Thirdly, the water lease agreement was forced on our city. Many people in our community, while, while appalled at your company's actions, felt intimidated and unable to challenge you due to the wealth and resources of your company in comparison to those of our small community. We found it especially disturbing that your company, oh, chose to initiate your efforts to take control of our water within weeks of a devastating fire that destroyed over 150 of our homes and community institutions. In response, our organization has worked to resist the loss of our water through publicizing the situation and reaching out for assistance. We tried to avoid a time-consuming and costly legal battle by instead act, act, asking local and state water regulatory agencies to investigate the situation. Our city council agreed to support these efforts. In response, you sued WCWC, nine individual citizens who spoke out on the issue and the city of Lee. One year ago, in December 2017, during our superior court hearing, the presiding judge dismissed WCWC and the nine individuals from the lawsuit. She stated very clearly that we had merely been exercising our protected constitutional rights and should have never been named in this case. In 
instead of accepting this decision, you have chosen to appeal. Yet, to date, you have not provided any valid legal justification for this appeal. This is forcing us to continue this time-consuming legal process for many more months. Your actions are those of a bully, designed to intimidate us into silence. Our presence at your corporate headquarters today, supported by many allies, demonstrates that this attempt has failed. At the same time, your company is engaged in a legal fight with the city of Weed over the ownership of what has long been our community's portion of the water from Bogan Springs. Your pursuit of this water and your lawsuit are draining resources from our economically challenged and fire-affected community. Resources that would be better spent on rebuilding and providing basic services to residents and businesses. That you apparently attend to, intend to use the water our community depends on to sell to the international bottling industry for export is particularly offensive. Right. A community's drinking water is not meant to be just another commodity to be bought and sold. Whether you can legally force our community to give up, give up our water is unclear. What is clear to all of us, however, is that this is an unethical action unbecoming of your company's historical relationship with the people of we. Please listen to the words of the Superior Court judge and immediately drop your appellate court appeal of the dismissal of WCWC and nine lead citizens from your lawsuit. These parties should never have been named and it is your responsibility to recognize this and respond accordingly. Please drop your lawsuit against the city of Weed and recognize the city's rights to the two cubic feet per square, per square foot of Bogan Springs water. This is the right thing to do and would honor the intentions of the former mill owner, International Paper, comply with California statutes regarding water use priorities, and recognize the historical usage of the Bogan Springs water for the people of Weed for domestic and municipal purposes. Over the last three years, the reputation of Roseburg Forest products has suffered considerable damage, both in our community and more widely, due to your pursuit of the city's portion of Bogan Springs and your ill-considered slap suit against WCWC and the nine named individuals. You still have an opportunity to do the right thing and restore your reputation. Fulfilling our two requests above are the first steps in doing so. More sincerely, we have our president of WCWC, Jim Taylor, has signed this, and the Water for Citizens of Weed, California. And we are about to take this letter to their corporate office, and hopefully they will receive it. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. All right, here we go, Jimmer. Wait, we just want to deliver a letter to, would Mr. Mulberry come out and accept it personally? Unfortunately not. Mr. Ford? Would any other executive or Mr. Ford or anybody else? No, we were Unfortunately going. not. Any, can you give us a reason why? Is they just uh, don't want to face this or? They just have no comment. They have no comment. They just said that they don't want it. There will be an email sent out later on about the this, but after that, right now they have no comment. And you, could we entrust this letter to one of you to give we it to We can hand it to the front desk. We will. Yeah. You can will? entrust can it to I, one of us. Go in and hand it Unfortunately to not. Okay, well. We will pass the letter off to one of them. What is their fear? Do you know what they're afraid of? I don't. We just know what we've been informed. It's hard to live without water. Okay. All right, guys. Okay. Thank All right. You Everybody, thank you. Woo! Come on, Roseburg. Do the right thing. Yes. Do the right thing. 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 Do the right thing! Do the right thing!
Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Here we go. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Okay, do you want to sing that?